Extra Holes is proud to announce our sponsorship, our new sponsorship, Podcorn.com. If you're a podcaster like us and you're looking for sponsorship opportunities, Podcorn.com has a long list of products and services that you can work with to support your content. Scott and I have found the site super easy to work with. You create an account, navigate their list of sponsors, and then hop into the workrooms to negotiate and hammer out the details. What we also like about Podcorn, it's a platform. So there's no agency, no middleman fees, and I can go straight to the source. So again, thank you to Podcorn and be sure to use and visit podcorn.com today. Scotty, we have a great show for today. It's Postmasters Podcast. I can't wait, John. Thank you again to Podcorn. Who doesn't like Podcorn? Uh, thanks again. And I'm waiting, uh, excited to hear the talking points and excited to dive in today, buddy. So here we go. Today on Extra Holes, Hideki Matsuyama survives and conquers Augusta National and becomes the first Japanese player to bring home a major title. What does this mean to golf globally? Defending champ DJ misses the cut along with big names like Rory, Westwood, Cantlay, and Day. And our good friend Matt Wolf gets a DQ to add to his WSDs. It looks like it's it looks like the tour has a new face that is catching attention, especially when it comes to majors. Welcome to the limelight, Will Zalatoris. How do you like the setup? Thursday was a true test of skill and patience. Firm greens tested the field. Is this the future of what the members want? And our good friend Wayne Player adds to his Augusta shenanigans and gets banned from the national for life. Scotty, take it away and let us know your thoughts on last week's Masters. Oh, John, I'm excited to talk about it. Um, the golf course, first of all, was interesting on Thursday, how burnout the greens look like U.S. Open greens. And, you know, uh, Augusta is one of the few places, if not the only place in the world that can actually manipulate how the grass is, how the course plays with all the uh, all that the, the sub drainage and all that stuff that they have around there. I thought they did a fantastic job with the course set up all week. I think they got the scores they wanted to get. I thought 10 or 11 under would win it and 10 under did win it. There was a number of great storylines. Um, I thought one of the coolest things, and, and I'm sure we'll skip around a little bit, but Hideki's caddy after at the end of the round, when he was standing at the 18th, putting the pin back in, he took his hat off and, and basically took a bow to the golf course, to whoever he bows to. But I thought it was a pretty cool moment. You know, and, you know, I've looped before, and I'll tell you this much, I think it actually should be the staple for every, every caddy from this point on when they grab their flag and they put in, they put in the pin and they look back down 18 and, and take a bow. And, and, you know, I, I thought it was a special moment. It's going nuts on so, social media. And uh, I was, you know, being, being a looper, you know, sometimes I really, I really got a kick out of that. I thought it was a, a, a great, and especially there, right. Where, yeah. where, you know, history is so big and, and, you know, uh, etiquette, you know, is so big um, that I thought it was a great, great little uh, into the, into the masters. Yeah. You know, what was really cool is how good it is for golf with the Tokyo Olympics coming up this summer. Uh, because obviously with Hideki being the first uh, major winner from Japan and having the Olympics in Japan, I think it's just going to enhance I think it's really going to make at least the golf segment for me something that's going to be a must watch. Totally agree. And actually, I think it's going to be one of the feature sports, actually, I think, you know, where I think there's going to be a lot of focus. Right. Um, especially in Japan. Um, but, you know, I, th I thought about this after, you know, we talked about this yesterday and I thought it'd be pretty cool for have him walk in holding the flag. Right. For 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 Japan. Wearing the green jacket. I mean, I think it would be awesome if he's just yeah. walking in with a green jacket on. Yeah. Although, you know, out of maybe, maybe he's got the uniform underneath, but then he wears the green jacket. I think it would be awesome if, if they did that. I yeah, think. I'll take a hundo on the side. That's not going to happen, but it would be great. <laughs> no, it's funny. not. But I mean, it's a great way to look at it. I think it'd be, I think it'd be awesome to see because. Um, I personally have not hundo, played Castle. Well, give, me, give me odds on that hundo, bro. I like odds yeah. on that hundo. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people that would give you odds on that. That's not happening. Um, <laughs> they're playing at, and I'm sure you've played or looped there before. They're playing at the Casa Magaseki Country Club. About thirty. Oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Actually, I yeah, I played that many times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, probably no looped for the dolly there a couple times, huh? Yeah. But just just Asia alone. <laughs> Let's just look at Asia alone globally for this win. Um, 
Well, you, you know, but back when we played a long time ago, like especially when I was playing in Canada and, and the South American tour, if, if I saw one Asian player, I'd, I'd be surprised, right? And now, you know, golf has just boomed over there. And now, you know, in Japan, and then Japan actually it led over into the Korea, and now Korea, it's leading into China. And these, you know, these are big golf, you know, countries now. And so right. just being that it's an Asian player that won a major is, is huge, let alone Japan. You know, you've been in the golf business a long time. There's people over there that can't play golf. They can't afford to play golf, but they have four tier, four tier driving ranges and you have to have tee times for those driving ranges. So, you know, I just think if we always, if we thought that golf was booming in Asia, you can just go ahead and double that now. I think it's just yeah. going to be gigantic and I think it's going to be everywhere. So as cool as it was for him to win and, you know, great for worldwide golf, as we've talked about, I kind of thought the Sunday was flat. I mean, I was waiting for something great to happen. I mean, Shoffley's charge was kind of cool until he shit the bed on 16. But I mean, I just, you were waiting to get excited and I just never quite, just never got super duper into it. And again, what, what, what is, uh, what, you know, they all say it's the back nine on Sunday, right? This is where all these charges happen. And, you know, I, you know, there was a nice charge by, by John Rom, but the problem is he was way too far back. You know, yeah. I think he might've been the only guy that shot under 69 on Sunday uh, with a 66, but again, you know, he was way too far back to, to make this interesting where he would have posted, you know, if he was posted, if he posted one or two shots behind, this could have got a real, it got really interesting because, you know, here you got a kid, you know, that's, you know, winning his first major and, and uh, it's not easy to do and it's the master. So, you know, I think we should, we could have seen some tightening up and, and some interesting um, drama down the stretch. But again, yes, he, he pumps five iron in the water on 15 um, I, I guess my question before I get into it is like, would you have laid up or would you have gone at just thinking about, you know, how you're hitting the golf ball, how things are going, would you have laid up? Because Shaw Flake did say in his interview that he was like, well, when I saw him go for it, meaning he was shocked that he did go for it. What would your, you talking about Rahm or, or no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Matsuyama on 15 when he blew it over the green on 15 into the water and, uh, and where, and then, you know, Shoffley gets it. I think that I think it was adrenaline that he hit too far. I think those are the decisions that you make before you play the round. Uh, I, I think those are the things that he they had probably discussed as a you know as a caddy and, and player, and because because what happens is is you do get caught up in the heat of the moment. Obviously, I've not played Augusta on a Sunday, <laughs> the lead, but you know I think that if you lay up, sometimes that little pitch shot's just as I mean that pitch shot from eighty yards or ninety yards is a you know, kind of off a slight downslope, you know, to a, a skinny green. And I, I just, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I just, I don't. Yeah. It, it, you can look at it a couple different ways, right? Your, your adrenaline's flying, right? So, you know, it, it, you're, you're probably at a yardage where, you know, you're talking like six iron, like really, this is a six iron, like that's crazy. Right. So I don't know, um, you know, and then, and then all of a sudden you're telling your opponent that, you know, yo, boy, this guy's starting to play conservative, right? He's going to let me come to him, you know. Uh, yeah. Me, I, I'm, I'm not the aggressor, so I probably would have laid up. Um, but I have a lot of belief in my game inside 120 yards. So uh, that's probably, yeah. you know, probably the, the decision there. But, um, you know, it, it, and, and then it became very interesting where, you know, uh, Shoffley makes birdie. There's a two shot swing. And now he's got yeah. a two shot lead down to 16. Mm -hmm. Now we've talked about this. And one of the things that I, I noticed that in the interview with Shoffley was, you know, we thought it, you know, they played with a lot of veterans and a lot of veterans told them like, you know, go with what you feel, not go with what you see. Like a lot of those kind of things came into the decision-making um, I think it was like 170 something. They hit eight iron, right? Well, where the ball landed was just right of the bunker and then it came down. So I think the line that they took on with this eight iron was, was way too aggressive. A lot of guys hit it right and hit it up on the hill and let the ball come down. So I think if he actually hits it on the right line that he's supposed to hit it on, I think he's 20 feet short, but he's on the green. 
So hey, I, you know, if my aunt had balls, she'd be my uncle. I mean, come on, they're in the heat of the battle. And he, he handled the interview nicely saying, you know, I, I've taken away from, I learned from it, but you got so many things going through your, you know, your veins, your blood and all that. I think he's still going to win. Yes. I would have liked to see oh, him no take doubt. a different line. Um, I, the one guy that I was kind of, you know, really pulling for was the Wake Forest kid, uh, this Will Zalatoris. Yeah. I mean, he still has no PGA tour status by the way, yeah. but I mean, he handled himself. He shot, I think, 34 in the front nine, and I thought he handled himself, you know, very, very well. I mean, what a great story, right? So 17 months ago, something like that, he didn't even, he didn't even have any card. He, he wasn't on any tours, right? And he takes yeah. a nice little run on the Corn Ferry, has uh, a bunch of top tens, and I think he wins once, and then actually gets him into the U.S. Open at Wingfoot and places sixth. And then all of a sudden he starts creeping up the board, right? right. To get in these tournaments and starts playing very consistent. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of his game. I mean, the guy looks like he's 150 pounds soaking wet, right? Oh, no kidding. And he hits it like 300 yards. I mean, the kid is a ball striker, flat out he, ball striker. He looks like he could be Owen Wilson's like mini me or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> What's the yeah. story with he and Romo being buddies? So Romo owns a, a home on the third hole where he, he is playing out of in Dallas. And they oh. got hooked up to play golf one day and they've been buddies ever since. And Zalatoris has actually come out and said, like, look, I pick his brains on 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 pressure situations, what he thinks, how he and how he does stuff in football. And a lot of it is kind of related, you know, to, you know, just under how to handle pressure. But getting back to his situation, you know, let me ask you a question here. If he continues to play like he is. Do you understand that I don't think Steve Stricker can actually pick him in the Ryder Cup because he I think he has to win to he actually has to get tour status? Yeah. So that's that's quite interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if there is a stipulation that you have to have tour status to actually be in that. I would guess that to be yes. But yeah. then but then as a former PGA club professional, you have to understand that the Ryder Cup is you know, a PGA of America thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe he does it because the PGA of America and the PGA tour, while they try to work hand in hand, sometimes <laughs> aren't always no, the they, they you know, best bedfellows, if you will. Yeah. And, and, and I don't know what it's like. Uh, I think the tour is different. I don't know if the tour, even for the president's cup, right. Is the president's cup a situation where that's the tour. He, yeah. That's the tour. Right. And he's not a tour member yet. So, right. um, you know, that's that's quite an interesting situation that actually Stricker could be in where he wants to pick him and he can't, you know, because of what's what's happened. So I have a feeling you're going to see Will Zalatoris in every tournament possible all the way until, you know, these picks happen. Uh, well, I hope he wins. Um, it's one of those deals where it's kind of like when not exactly when speech came out because he had stats and whatever, but it's, it's fun to see a young kid that works hard good player and uh and had the when you have the nerve on sunday on the back nine at augusta i think that's going to bode well for your career yeah um getting back to the Ma matsuyama win um it's I, I thought it was it was i think i think he goes seven under in 11 holes after the rain delay on saturday yeah and some of these that one in the tournament be, yeah and, and exactly right and then it was uh geez i had to be like uh, he was getting balls up and down out of ball washers just to hang in there on that. And I mean, the up and down on 18 on Saturday was amazing. Right. So I, I think that the, as we see, there was not a lot of guys making big runs that when he had that four shot lead going into Sunday, I felt like, boy, he could shoot 72 or 71 and, and win. And yeah. that's actually pretty much what happened. You know, a great drives down 17, great drives down 18 under pressure. Um, I, I thought the wedge on 18 was a little, uh, you know, yeah. you know, so, um, but again, um, I think the whole, the whole deal was just great for golf. Uh, and, and yeah. I think what you see out of all the players reactions, you know, he doesn't speak a lot of English, right? I think he understands more than you think. Um, but, uh, I think there's a lot of guys that just loved, uh, loved, um, watching him win. So remember when we were out in Palm Springs playing at the Palms a couple of weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Did you meet, did I introduce, did you meet Dr. Craig Farnsworth when he was out there? Because he mm -hmm. teaches out of there. So Matsuyama, um, his, his putting has gotten better, and he actually uh, has, has had gone to and has been going to Farnsworth. 
So, oh, really? Okay. And he is kind of the putting guru. And then they gave him they gave him a shout out. Um, they gave him a shout out on I think it was on Sunday, Barnesworth. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Well, one of the reasons why I we thought that maybe it was you know kind of just okay when it comes to the whole you know tournament itself, we had some big names missing the cut, and and uh, you know I just think it would have been a little bit better. DJ and Rory, Rory. I mean, that's look at you know I don't know if I want to call it embarrassing or call it a oh he's kind of going back to the well. He's got a brand new teacher and and doing that. Westwood, I think we we've come to the decision that's possibly just hit the wall. He had yeah. a run that was just a little too – that was a great r- little run, but maybe has uh, hit a wall a little bit. And then Cantlay and Day, two guys that actually play really good there, um, just didn't happen. It didn't, it didn't happen for them. It didn't, they didn't play well at all. I mean, uh, DJ, I think, was the only one that was actually near the cut, actually. Um, yeah, he bogeyed 18. Five, that was miss. five over yeah. par. So, uh, I don't yeah. know if you got anything to say about the, that. No, uh, Spieth – was so speed finished tie for third uh you know rom had a tough tough week because of the new new baby boy but he shot 372s and then 66 uh rose shot 65 the first round never even sniff shooting under par from there but one of my you know it's always fun watching uh cameron smith and that the the flowing hair yeah 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 um but somebody else that's still on my radar who i actually took in our little thing was is Corey connors yeah. he had another strong finish in a tough field and so I look to see him have, continue to have a good year. You know, the, the, the Rose situation is quite interesting because the golf course got easier as the days went on. He, right. he shot seven under in like gnarly conditions. Like, and yes. you, 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 you talked about it at the very beginning. You have never seen or we have never seen these greens so brown and purple. And yeah. I'm wondering, you know, is, is this, you know, look at Ridley came out. Your friend Ridley came out and, and talked about, you know, we're not going to change the golf course to 8,000 yards. I mean, we're not going to do that. Right. right? So what's, true. what's the, what's our defense, right? Well, the defense is because of, you know, the technology that they have under the ground and in the greens and all this stuff is baking the golf course out and making it fast. And what happens is in November, they were able to take lines, right. That were very aggressive. And now the way that Bobby Jones wants you to play the golf course, when the greens are firm and hard and the golf course is fast, you got to take it in angles to be able to hit greens to get it to, you know, flow towards the pin. Um, yeah. The uh, irony, the irony of getting a firm and fast like the U S open does and USGA does is that uh, Ridley was a past president of the USGA. He's obviously a decorated member at Augusta, but to know the history of Augusta is that when, when Bobby Jones and Cliff Roberts built the national, back in, I believe it was in the thirties, um, they wanted to host a U.S. Open and the USGA snubbed them. And so they basically said, you know, USGA, right. we're going to make our own tournament. And however many years later, how ironic that, uh, that Fred Ridley, who used to be the president of the USGA, now basically runs, runs Augusta. Interesting, just some interesting things. But uh, I, I thought all in all, they did a fantastic job with, with the golf course and they got a, you know, they got the best ball striker and that's what he wants. That's what really wants is the best right. ball striker. And, and I, I actually can see this being the norm for the future. I don't know about you, but I can see them saying our defense is going to be the greens yep. uh, and our defense and our greens are going to be firm. So boys get used to it. This is the way it's going to be because yep. all the interviews on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were like, and Thursday were, wow, I, we, I've never seen the golf course this firm and hard. And right. And it was a wow of a like, oh my gosh, I don't know how, how I'm going to attack this golf course. Yep. So I think Ridley found out that this is actually the way that we can keep this to be. And like you said, 14 and under and down, you know? Yeah. So Well, congrats again to Hideki. There's a couple of side notes that I think are worthy of mention from the <laughs> Masters. Number one is, is Wayne Player, who's, you know, this isn't his first black eye, but he said that he found out like Wednesday night before Thursday morning that he was going to be caddying for his dad as the honorary, you know, uh, first tee with, with uh, Nicholas and Lee Elder, which was cool that Lee was there. Yeah. But, you know, in true cheese bag fashion, he held up a sleeve of encore balls and long story long, he's now banned from Augusta national. Um, ironically, he owns a stake in that golf company encore, but he said, Oh, I was just, you know, I just happened to be standing where I was standing and that's where they put me. I'm going to call bull- bullshit on that. 
I'm also going to tell you that in 2018, he was, uh, he, he was arrested for fraud renting a house at the masters. He wrote a bad check and was the, the guys, you know, I don't know him personally, uh, but what do I read about him? He's not going to make my favorite force. And let's put it that way. Yeah. And, and I'd love to know the side of Gary, you know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think he's come out and said anything. Um, but you know, that's gotta be embarrassing that you're, you know, one yeah. of your, your seasoned veterans, the guy hits one of the first shots to get the golf tournament started has got a kid who's just a nightmare. So, um, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see uh, if, if Gary will speak on behalf of this situation or he's just going to let it go down the road and, right. and, and not worry about it anymore. But I'm assuming that uh, he might have a granddaughter there next year or something like yeah. that. So, um, doing well, that. But, a couple of things, uh, like you had mentioned earlier, uh, Matt Wolf took another trip to the Dairy Queen and his reputation is not, you know, it's one thing, I guess, to withdraw nothing to get DQ'd, but he certainly is not doing himself any favors and after be, being on the cover of Golf Magazine. But um, Billy Horschel, Billy Horschel came out and, and publicly apologized to the members of Augusta National and the patrons for it. He slammed it. He was slamming his club down. The, the water stuff, you know, where he looked, looked like he was going down a fraternity water slide into the creek on 13 was kind of funny. Yeah. He made par one day and made triple on 18 out of there. But I think his temper got the better of him and maybe that was his expectations, but he apologized. And I, there's, you know, golf is a game of honor and you don't get mad. I've certainly gotten mad plenty of times, but if there's one course you might not want to get mad right. and look like a exactly. dumbass, I yeah. would think it'd be Augusta national. <laughs> yeah. I, I hear you there. Yeah. The Matt Wolf situation is, is uh, you know, he's got a cloud over him now and people are looking at him differently. You know, he was this phenomenon coming out of college out of Oklahoma state and, and, you know, a unique sweet swing, but hits at about 330 and, and you know, very powerful and stuff. But, you know, I think it all started in, in Texas when he decided to, to withdraw after uh, one round of golf and get paid $32,000 to do it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, another thing, you know, then, then all of a sudden uh, gets his hand slapped, we think, we, you know, the, against just speculation. But you know, why isn't he playing in the players? I don't think it's because his you know, it's the biggest paycheck of the year and, right. and he's not playing in that. And then uh, all of a sudden, this is an incorrect scorecard where he, he signs for a, you know, a different score on a, on a hole and, and, but he was going to miss the cut anyways, but right. I'll tell you, it just doesn't look good in the paper that your name. And then it says DQ because yeah. people sometimes don't even know what he got DQ'd for. Right. And, and, and then all of a sudden it's just like, what, what is going on with this guy? Yeah. And, um, I don't know. I, hopefully it, it turns out for the positive down the road. But uh, right. right now, you know, I guess if you want to say it between him and Billy Horschel, there's a uh, trunk slammer award. So. Uh. <laughs> so. All right. So the tour, it's, it was, it's been fun. We've had two masters in five months. <laughs> um, we're going to have another major in another month where the PGA is at uh, Kiowa this year. And you and I had talked about earlier in the week, just in shooting the breeze that, um, the tour schedule is a little different this year. They go to, they, as they always do, they're going to the RBC Heritage uh, this week. And then they go, I think they go to New Orleans for that best ball. And then, uh, then I think to Texas and then Quail Hollow before, I think they go Quail Hollow and then Texas before the PGA. But um, I did want to give a shout out. I'm going to be leaving this week, actually today, going down to play uh, Palmetto Golf Club, which is the poster up here on the wall right back there. And three of the members from there, um, Kevin Kisner, Scott Brown, and Matt Neesmith are playing at the Heritage. So where I usually look forward to seeing those guys and maybe getting like a whiskey nine in or something with those guys, it's not going to happen, uh, not going to happen this week, but I will be cheering them on while I'm down in, uh, in South Carolina. Yeah. Uh, you know, getting out of Minnesota and, and sliding on down there to your golf club, but, uh, uh, say hi to say hi to Brooksy for me and all the boys. I think it's going to be a nice little fun trip. Um, you got it. You know, you know, drinking your sweet tea at night and you know, just you know, yep. at, hanging at the campfire. So uh, uh, okay. one of these days, I'll I'll make the trip down there. I can't wait and um, and, and to play that place because it's a, it's it's awesome. I heard it is open invitation. Let's again thank Podcorn for uh, you know. sponsoring this podcast and and that, anything else, Johnny. Otherwise, I'm gonna you know, get my golf clubs. There's snow on the ground here today in Minnesota. So I'm going to get my golf clubs packed up. Not, not, we didn't have to shovel anything, but just a dusting of snow, but 
enough to make you want to get on an airplane and get the hell out of here. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, no worries. Uh, just a little quick post uh, postmaster podcast, a little bit of what was on our mind. Um, we appreciate everybody that's tuning in. Um, we got more coming down the road, obviously. Um, probably going to be taking a couple weeks off uh, and then getting back, uh, getting prepped and ready for um, – for Rory, actually, to make another run at Kiwa, where he uh, he he had a great uh, PGA there uh, last time he was uh, last time they they hosted. So, other than that, um, uh, that's all oh, I got. got that's all I got. And uh, folks, we'll see you uh, another time down the fairway. And uh, enjoy your enjoy your weekend this weekend, and uh, enjoy the heritage. Take care, hey, buddy. Take care.